Good evening, everybody. This is Thomas Ott from NeuralMarketTrends.com, and welcome to my fourth video tutorial on RapidMiner 5.0. Just want to give you a quick warning that this will probably be a two-video part series, because what I'm going to discuss tonight, the data generation operators and the genetic algorithm optimizing data transformation, we'll probably have to take up in two videos. It's quite a bit of information, but it is vastly entertaining and interesting because everybody seems to hit my site looking for rapid minor genetic algorithm tutorials. So I am giving you what you want. Okay, let's get started. First things first, if you are a tinkerer like me and you lie in bed awake at night thinking about how to build various data models, but you might not have all the data you need or not enough, but you have an idea, RapidMiner 5.0 can help you. If you don't have any data and you just want to fool around, RapidMiner gives you a set of data generators that are ready to go. And there's a quite a bit of them. Let's take a look at where they are. They're right now. They're located under utility, under data generation. And look at all these guys right here. Generate data, nominal data, Team profit data, direct mail, etc. So let's take a look at a few of these. Let's grab generate data. We're going to be using this one for our genetic algorithm portion. Let's get direct mail data. This is interesting in case you're a marketer. And um, oh, no, let's generate sales data. Let's get that here. Okay, let's connect these to the output so we can see what they look like. And run them. See how quick this is. People, Rapid Miner 5.0 is vastly easier. Okay, here we go. We got three data sets. Let's run. Let's take a look at what they look like. Okay, let's take a look at the first one, the generate data set. Right here, look, we've got a label column and five attributes, all numerical, that will help hopefully explain what this label is doing. Okay. Let's go to the generate direct mail data. This one is interesting. I have used this data as the basis to design my company or to begin designing my company's business dashboard. See here you have a label, some fake names, ages, some other data, and you could easily run a classification algorithm through this and see where all the good nuggets of marketing goodness are. So let's move on to the next one, sales data. Again, right here. We go, we have some transactions, store ID, customer ID, products, dates, amounts, prices, etc. Very useful if you want to do some clustering analysis to see what people like to buy together with other things. Okay, there you have it. This is a great way for somebody who likes to tinker around, has some ideas, doesn't have the data, but wants to get started. Okay, let's close these out. Delete this one and delete this one. I'm going to use this guy right here. Okay, let's get started on genetic algorithms. First things first, I want to let you know that the genetic algorithm optimizer is a nested process. And what we're going to do is put another nested process, mainly a validation uh, nested process, underneath that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this generated data we're going to feed it into the genetic algorithm. It's going to run its algorithms and it's going to, it's going to take this data here. Let's go back here. It's going to take this data and reduce it. It's going to take, mutate, crossbreed these five attributes, and then it's going to select the best one or the best few that over time help explain what's going on with this label. Now imagine this. You're a trader, you have some stock data here, like closing prices, and you have maybe some technical analytic data like RSI, Cutler RSI, maybe stochastic indicators, some kind of numbers here that change over time because the market changes over time. You run it through a genetic algorithm to help explain your stock prices. And over time, you begin to notice that, you know what? the stochastic indicator might be better to use or something else. This is just a hint, people. I'm not giving anything else away because the rest is proprietary. 
Hint, hint, hint. Okay, let's go back. Let's start with the genetic algorithm. Let's go look for it. You can find the data transformation operators right here. Data transformation. And we're going to look at attribute set reduction. We're going to go to selection. We're going to go to optimization. And we're going to... I think it is optimized, this one. Yes, yeah. I believe it's this one. Let me see if I get the right one. Yes, I got the right one. Perfect. Okay. Now, as, as with my previous tutorial, you can see that this, these double windows indicate it's a nested process. So let's open that. Okay. Now we're going to get, we're going to take a simple validation. Simple validation. Validation. Or split validation, pardon me. Connect him, quick fixes. Okay. And then we're going to right click, quick fixes. Yes. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, before we do that, actually, now we got to go into a nested process again here. Okay, now here's where we put our learner. Here's where we do our testing and performance evaluation. It feeds back to the validator operator, which feeds back to the genetic optimization. So let's take a look here. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use a support vector machine. And in my personal experience, I found support vector machines to be pretty handy, especially in Forex trading models and in genetic optimization models. Hint, hint. So we're going to take this one right here, drag them over. Connect them. Connect. Now we're going to get our apply model operator, just as we did in the previous video tutorial. Number three, we're going to make the connections. Now we're going to get our performance evaluator. Drag them over. Make the connections. And then we are done. Okay, I only have one more error. Go back up here. We make this connection here. Okay, errors go away. We are set. Okay, now let's go back here for a second. Okay, this guy, performance goes out. Comes out to here. Goes up to here. And then we drag the performance over here. Why do we do this? We want to know what the overall performance is of this optimizer, this genetic optimizer. Okay, this is the reason why we're doing that. I kind of left this out by accident in my previous video. Um, Ingo from the development team in Germany pointed it out to me, and I wanted to point it out to you that yes, you could easily show the performance evaluators, performance measures in your output. Now, having said that, the model is ready to be run. And this is where I stop video number four. And in video number five, we are going to go over some of these interesting pieces of data here that we made that we like to talk about to run our optimization selection. So, thank you for watching. This is Thomas Ottduck at NeuralMarketTrends.com. And I look forward to hearing your comments, questions, concerns. And stay tuned for video number five.